Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It is episode 19 of AFC Greg's today, and it's the second episode of season three. If you missed the last episode, it will be up in a tag up at the top. And of course, if you want to watch Greg's all the way back from the start, there is a uh, little playlist down in the description down below alongside all my socials, which I'd love for you to follow. And of course, drop a subscription while you are down there. However, today's episode, we are going into September. We've played a few games so far. We've done pretty well to be fair results wise not sure about performances wise but i'm sure i'll tell you about that in just a little bit but for now let's roll the intro and get into the episode So we've actually started the season really, really well. Uh, we haven't lost yet, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're playing very well. I, I, I said we've started very well. Results-wise, we've started well. Quality of football, we've not really gelled yet. And I think there's a long way for us to go this season. So in the games that we have won, such as this 3-2 victory over Bamba Bridge, it took a penalty in the 89th minute to win the game. We then had two score draws where we were leading, I think, at every single point. Yeah, so we were leading 1-0 uh, and 2-1 in the Chorley game. We were leading 1-0 in the Chester game. We managed to keep a clean sheet against Brackley, but Brackley definitely had chances. And the same against Kings Lynn. Perhaps probably our best performance was the game against Kings Lynn. And today we play Curzon Ashton, who we of course played uh, last season in the Cup and drew 1-1 and then lost on penalties. Hopefully we've improved enough to turn them over this time really. We're at home, first game in the bakery that you'll see so far this season. Let's just take a quick look at the people that we've brought in. We've brought in a couple of people since the last episode. Let's just quickly go to our transfer history. We have brought in... Harry Wilson on loan. Uh, let's go straight to him. He is on loan from Fleetwood Town. He is perhaps a slightly better version of the striker that we bought in last episode, who I'll talk about in just a minute because he's actually been quite good. We'll talk about him in just a little bit damber. Um, so this is Harry Wilson. He is Northern Irish. He's got good finishing, decent composure, good first touch, which is really important. Decent heading for someone who's only 5'10". Good acceleration, very good acceleration and pace. Good natural fitness, determination's there. His technique's there. I'm liking what I see. Again, teamwork not really there. Work rate not really there. I don't know what to think of that. He has got a goal so far in the league, but we will see how well he and Damba do so far this season. So if we go back to the tactics, I've been kind of switching between this tactic and this which is kind of what we've been doing uh, that is because one of the players we have brought in is gareth evans who as a personal preference from me because he's a former portsmouth player and a P portsmouth player that i very much liked he played a lot of games for pompey 172 and scored 30 goals um he was an attacking midfielder he can also play in center midfield as well gareth evans is a fantastic signing for us and he's only 34 at the moment like that's not too old that he's not going to be able to make an impact however having said that i'm not really sure where to play him so i could play him in this central attacking midfield position where he's fairly uh, adaptive i can play him on this left side of attack in the inside forward role he can equally play advanced playmaker out there you know i don't i don't really know what to do with him i don't like him in the centre of midfield. Although he can play there, I would rather have Bale and Bradbury, who are the two players that I've kind of decided should be there this season, although Bradbury hasn't really put in anything good so far. And I'm also looking at Greg Moore, who I don't really know what to do with him either, because let's take a look at his stats. His stats show that he is really good at finishing and composure, so I want him in front of goal, I want him shooting, so I've got him on inside forward at the moment, but he failed learning cuts inside from the wing, and he's right footed so he's cutting in onto his left and his left isn't that good so then i've tried to put him on the left side and he can't do it at all and it's taking me a lot of time to train him in this position and he has gone up half a star in the gray now and that's pretty much all he has done so i'm a bit of <sighs> i don't really know what to do with the team right now at the moment damba is playing up front he has scored three goals in six games for us so far and put in some decent performances 
Uh, Egin Sans started well, but then just decided he didn't want to play for us anymore, basically. He, he like I think he got two goals in the first two games of the season and then has been like 6.2s, 6.1s for the other games. So that's why he's been dropped. And uh, McGowan, who you will see here in this position, is actually a winger. But throughout preseason, I mentioned it in the last episode, uh, he scored seven goals in seven games in preseason. And it was because my assistant was recommending that I play him at deep lying forward here in this position. And he did really well there. And I then did it last game and he scored. So I don't really know what to make of it. Maybe it's some weird kind of accidental cheat code where he's actually really good in that position. Let's just see what he is uh, stats wise in that position. Like he's got his passing, his teamwork and things like that. But his technique's not great. His vision's poor. Uh, his off the ball isn't great. His flair's not good. His strength isn't good. His finishing isn't good. And his composure isn't good. Yes, he has stats in other positions. But for some reason, this deep lying forward support position seems to get the best out of him. And I have no idea why, but it just does. So uh, that's what we're going to go with. And for now, I'm going to leave more on the right side while he learns his new position. He is being trained in it. He is now orange there. He couldn't even play there at all. Um, so we're going to leave Evans out on the wing and bring him into inside forward support. Him more on the right and Bradbury and Bale in the centre. So we're sticking with this for now. That's what we're going to go with. Let's go get into this first game and hopefully you'll enjoy it. So as I said, we are at the bakery for this game. Um, and I'm going to tell my team we're going to win fairly comfortably and we should play our own game and we will win. We walk out with Curzon Ashton's rather lovely pastel pink kit. Very nice. And uh, we, of course, play in our blue home kit, which we pretty much play every game in, to be honest. Not many games do we actually manage to whack out the orange kit. Here's the first chance of the game then. Thrown in from Trotnerman, and McGowan picks that up really well in his deep position. Uh, Damba does kind of half-heartedly run for it, but uh, it's not going to be enough to get there ahead of Mason. Mason boots the ball over the top, and that's going to go all the way through to Hemming. Hemming's been very good so far. I've been happy with Hemming. Hemming boots the ball over the top in search of McGowan. McGowan takes the ball under control and slots it. Oh, nearly slots it in. You see what I mean? That's the deep lying forward position there that he's picking the ball up in there. And somehow ended up through on goal. I don't really know what to do with him. Ball cleared in and uh, played all the way back to Bale. And that's going to be the end of the highlight. So yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum there from my perspective. Do I play McGowan up front when that's not really his natural position and we're losing that big striker? Or do I play a kind of 4-2-3-1 and I'm losing the big striker anyway? I don't know. I don't really know. Right on half time then, Mason is going to clear the ball over the top. It's not going to be won by a Greg's head. It's Evans for Curzon Ashton. Oh, and I just praised the goalkeeper, didn't I? I just praised the goalkeeper. It's straight at him. It is straight at him and it's ended up trickling into the back of the net. Please don't... We've done so well off camera. It's really annoying when you do really well off camera and then the first game back, you then do really badly. I mean, we're not doing badly. It's just that's very unlucky. It's literally straight at him and he's kind of saved it like this and the ball's here and it's gone underneath his arm as he's tried to parry it there. Not particularly good work from Hemming. They don't deserve it. We've had 10 shots there too. We need to do better. I'm actually going to thrash my arms and say I'm far from pleased. And we're probably going to make a sub as well. I'm actually going to bring on Harry Wilson because ba uh, Damba is not having the best of games. What I might do is change McGowan's position to advanced forward as well. And perhaps with the advanced forward's ability to push out wide, perhaps that'll allow space in behind for our inside forwards maybe that's my thinking anyway and let's start the second half early chance for Curzon Ashton perhaps they whip the ball in towards the back post headed away by Jarvis who's not the best in the air but it was a decent header away from him Garrett Mayhew or Mehew here's Evans again for Curzon Ashton poor ball over the top really well intercepted by Oh, that's a really poor ball from Gareth Evans but Wilson's done really well to get on the end of it all the way over to Greg Moore Greg Moore shoots should do better Gareth Evans and Waters linking down on that wing there and uh, I don't really know what Gareth Evans' pass was. In towards the front post, cleared away. And now that we've got this formation, we are losing out on that front post header. I'll need to move one of the centre-backs there, I think. Waters with the throw in, into Gareth Evans, into the edge of the penalty area. Stumbles, but not a penalty. Jameson kicks the ball forward. Flicked on by McGowan. That's going to be offside, I'm pretty sure. But Mason's going to pick it up and stop the offside being called. Ball over the top goes all the way through to Hemming who is going to gather and potentially make up for his mistake if he can get a good ball over the top here. It is a good ball. It is to McGowan. McGowan one-on-one, -on -one, must score, good save, but you've got to score those. 
That's not the kind of chance we want to be missing at all. Corner to Greggs, into us. The near post, Malokwu heads wide. And Greggs down to fourth as it stands. Half an hour left then and we're going to make our final substitution and I think it is going to be Brad Jackson coming on for Gareth Evans who hasn't really done anything so far this game. We're going to send him into attack, attack on all sides. Brad Breen's Mazala role uh, is probably not doing particularly well as well. Although actually one of his better performances at 7 point, uh, 6.7. Greg Moore with a 6.3. Perhaps we should take... Nah, Gareth Evans has a uh, 6.2. In fact, we've got one more sub, don't we? So we can take off more as well. So let's take off more and bring on Pervs. Um, great name still. And we're going to make him a winger attack just to give us a little bit more width on that side. And perhaps McGowan can get in down there. That's what we're going to do. Hopefully that is enough to get us at least a point in this game. Berate the team and tell them they're not good enough. And that seems to inspire them a little bit. Not enough to get an, a chance maybe, although there is a highlight now. Bradley. Trotman from the throw. Ball aimlessly kicked forward from Kurz and Ashton. Here's Jameson. Again, aimlessly kicked forward from Greggs. But Jackson picks the ball up really nicely. Can he find a pass through? Too many players have run on in behind, which means that's probably because I've got everyone on attack. McGowan's turned his man on. Oh, I nearly thought he was going to be through then. Malokwu picks the ball up again. Bradbury is there. What can he do with the ball? If he shoots, it will be a waste of a chance. He manages to get the ball in and it's cleared away again. Bale picks it up now. Chance definitely isn't over. We haven't really had a highlight. Jackson heads the ball down. Wilson is there. Good save again off the post. And somehow we've not managed to score. That was quite an unbelievable piece of play where we've not managed to score. And that might be the end of this game. And to brace us again in an attempt to try and grab one more opportunity into stoppage time. Two minutes left, one minute left, and there is full time. Gregs have lost the first game of the season to Kurz and Ashton, a team that I'd have liked us to beat. We've got a 2.01 XG and not scored. That says a lot about our team, I think. Um, I'm not really sure what to do. Very disappointing, and that does drop us all the way down to sixth place from second. There's a lot of teams that have got that maybe one loss kind of level now. Uh, FC United are one of them, of course, our rivals. Not what you want to see from the Gregs boys, but let's go and play our next game. Nice big message at the end of that game to tell me that uh, that was our 25-game unbeaten home streak uh, from February last year. Pretty much ruined there, so not great. One thing I did forget to tell you is we're really trying to sign a particular striker right now called Kyle Hudlin. I don't know if any of you know him. He is a Solihull United player uh, and currently Solihull Moors. But he's six foot nine. I want this guy. I want this guy in the team. He's six foot nine. I just think he will solve all of our problems. Decent finishing, decent composure. 12 acceleration and 12 pace for someone who's six foot nine. 12 strength. Good penalty taking, good vision, good teamwork, good off the ball, good leadership, good determination, good bravery, good aggression. He is playing in the league above, but isn't playing, basically. He's just signed a new contract and he just won't sign for me. So I basically, I've put in transfer offers for him and they'll accept it and then he will reject the contract. And then also I've put loans in for him, I'm just constantly putting a loan bid in for him to try and bid him for the season. But uh, yeah, that's the player that I want and I think that's the player that will solve a lot of our problems. As you can see there, he's not interested in signing. Right, so the next game up is against Gloucester, who are actually second in the league. And this is the team that we are going with. I've decided it looked encouraging from having two advanced forwards up front to allow the inside forwards to get in behind a little bit. So I will see what this does and whether I like the look of this. So Damba and Wilson are going to start this game, both obviously quick players with good finishing. 13 pace on, on Damba and 14 on Wilson both can finish. Moore is going to play on the left side this time. I'm removing Gareth Evans who hasn't had the best performances for us so far to the point that the fans want me to take him out. So maybe he will make more of an impact off the bench. So Greg Moore, our amazing youth player, is going to play on the left side cutting in to try and score. McGowan, I didn't want to drop him. He played quite well. We're going to have him on the right and then Bale and Bradbury in the middle with Waters, Jameson, Malokwu and Jarvis across the back. And of course, Hemming in goal retains his position despite his poor performance last game. We may have to bring in Howard at some point, but not yet. Told the boys I'm expecting them to win today because we are at home yet again at the bakery. So hopefully we can get three points in this game and retain our charge upwards in the league. 
Waters whips the ball into the back post, headed away by McLeod. Only as far as Moore. He's going to shoot from range off the crossbar. Bounces down. Chambers clears. Only as far as Malok Weaver. That's the end of the highlight. Good start from Greggs. Throwing from Chambers. Mensa to McLeod. Mensa. Chambers gets the ball back. Dinks the ball forward in search of someone. But Malok Wu comes in and tidies up. Here's Bradbury. Can he find a pass? He can. It's to Bale. Bale dinks the ball forward. It's going to be headed away a little bit too easily. And I think... There's a few things. I might even add another midfielder into the midfield because we just feel like we're just not quite impacting the midfield enough. However, we are looking good going forward. Here's Jarvis inside to McGowan. Back out to Jarvis. Back to McGowan. Can he find a ball into Bradbury? He can. It's to Bale now. We're not working the ball into the box quite well enough for my liking here. And Bradbury nearly gives the ball away. Manages to find McGowan. And here's Jarvis. Can he get a ball in? Back out. And Bradbury's there again and eventually it's cleared away and this is actually going to end up as a Gloucester opportunity as McClaw goes down the right hand side whips the ball in towards the back post unbelievable save from Hemming saves it onto the post and then out and we got away with it a little bit there not doing enough around the edge of the penalty area throwing on the right hand side from Jarvis Wilson heads it back down to him crossed into the penalty area and again it's cleared away and we're just not really having the same impact that we'd have with someone big up front and I think that might be it. Mensa down the left-hand side. He can get the ball in. Here's Ocheng. Here's McLeod. And it's just ending up falling at Ocheng's feet. And uh, that's going to be 1-0 to Gloucester. And we're not looking very good in these games either. We've not looked good all season. We've just been a bit lucky with the first few games. I'm not really happy with some of the players we've brought in. Midfield in particular. I don't think we've got as good out of Bradbury as we could have done. Um, I don't think he looks particularly good. And then we're just not, not looking very good, guys. Corner, though. Whipped in towards the near post. Of course, it's not going to come to anything because I haven't changed corners because I'm an idiot. Ball back in. No, Wilson is there. Must score. He does, but it's disallowed. Really good ball back in from Bale, who still looks a pretty decent player, to be totally honest. I should probably play him a little bit more often. Throw into Gloucester on this right-hand side. Napper into the penalty area. Dinks the ball in. Mens is there. Straight into the hands of Hemming. Potentially not the end of the highlight, but also potentially the end of the highlight. Depends where this goes. Great ball over the top in search of Damber. He shoots and there's the goal. I knew it wasn't quite the end of the highlight. The way it was caught from the goalkeeper, Zach Hemming. Beautiful ball over the top. He gets his first assist of the season, I do believe. And Damber smashes it in. Good finish from the lad. Really good take there. First time on the left boot. Great finish. Headed away by Jarvis, but not far enough. Chambers picks the ball up and whips the ball back in. Headed away, and then Bradbury wins that header. Wilson's not going to quite get there, though, I don't think. Although he is going to intercept now from Moon. And Wilson can stride forward, and can Greg take the lead just before half time? Here's Dan, but they can! Really good play from Harry Wilson, the striker on the right-hand side. He manages to dispossess Moon, the left-back, run all the way forward, put in a perfect ball, and Damba is there to finish. Really good work from Wilson here because I didn't think he was going to do anything. Great interception here and Damba's making the right run into this sort of area so we can dink that ball in. Lovely little cushioned finish to score as well. 2-1 going into half time and suddenly my panic of how badly we were doing is not there anymore. We've played well, but there is room for improvement. I'm going to look at the bench a little bit here. Um, I really don't think the Mazala role is working. Um, I'm going to change it to a deep-lying playmaker support, I think. You know what? I'm going to bring off Greg Moore, who hasn't had a particularly good game. Evans is going to go out wide as a advanced playmaker. Just him for now. That will do. And we will see if he can make a better impact off the bench than he has been doing during the game. Early chance here. Jarvis throws into McGowan. Back out to Jarvis. He gets the ball in towards the back post. Damber's not quite there, but Bradbury is lurking on the edge of the penalty area. Plays the ball at the man, and then there's a little bit of space here for Waters. Back out to Bradbury. Who shoots again, and Napper is going to come away with the ball, and this could potentially be a really good chance for Gloucester. Can they get into the penalty area? They can. Good ball in. Good goal. McClure is there to tap in. Very, very poor defending from Greggs. Didn't like the way we closed him down. Couldn't catch up with him once he was past us. And a very easy tap in at the near post. Jameson not really keeping ahead of his man or Malokwu either. In fact, Jameson's been distracted to run out to Napa there. I don't know why he's running out to him when it should be Waters. I don't know why he's run all the way over there. No danger. Goalie can come cover that angle as well. Very silly from the defender there. Here's McGowan going forward. Great ball in. Damber's there again. That's going to be a goal. It's a hat trick for Damber. And it is six goals for the season for the youngster. Really good ball in from McGowan. And you can see what I mean. Here's my dilemma is that we are conceding goals. We are not dominating the midfield, but we are scoring goals. 
we are looking good going forward and that's that's the pros and cons of playing a 4-2-4 is that you are committing a lot to scoring goals and if you're outscoring everyone you play against great if you're not not so great so at the moment we seem to just be about outscoring but i would like to see a little bit more dominance in the midfield perhaps a, a 4-3-3 or something along lo those lines we might have to go for we'll see and here is Jarvis Jarvis is going to throw the ball in into McGowan yet again here's Bradbury can he get the ball in or pass the ball or shoot he does to Damba Damba gets a fourth and it is 4-2 to Greg's Damba's having an absolutely fantastic game and I have faith and confidence in him going forward this season as our guy I think he's going to be the guy that can get lots of goals the uh, Michael Taylor replacement really good reactions from him there i love the fact he's left footed as well everything i want in a striker is right there you'll see that greg's actually only just have an xg of one which is less than gloucester's as five minutes ticks on another throw in from this side jarvis throws it into mcgowan back to jarvis chance to whip the ball in yet again flicked on and cleared away and fondorp or fondrop can clear away mcclaw gets past his man gets the ball into the penalty area nobody's mocking him unbelievable save from hemmings and somehow we get away from that. I really thought Hemmings had run in the wrong direction there. I imagine that will be the last action of the game. It will indeed as we go into the 94th minute. And that is 4-2 to Greggs with four goals from Damba, our striker, who, you know, he doesn't look incredible, the Zambi uh, Gambian international. Well, he's not Gambian international, he's just Gambian. He doesn't look incredible, but he is playing very well. And at the end of this episode, Greggs have actually gone into third place and that game has done wonders for our goal difference, uh, taking us up to seven, which is the best in the league as it stands. Pushing up towards Boston and Southport, who are only one point ahead now and we've got the better goal difference. Uh, FC United, we are now two points clear of them after they had a very poor result against Chester. They lost 2-0. Um, so early signs in the league suggest that we're in there and up with the top seven or so. I don't think we're complete yet and I'm going to keep looking for that player that I think will secure us the title or promotion again this season we have to go for it we're wanting playoffs apparently I don't want playoffs I don't want to do the playoffs but if you have enjoyed this episode please leave a like on the episode leave a comment with who you think the star of the season is going to be I think it's probably going to be Damba judging by the four goals he scored in that game more hasn't really got going yet there's a couple of players that i would like to see a little bit more from um certainly we definitely we need we need a big striker basically what we need i really hope i can get the six foot nine guy i don't think i can i think i'm just going to keep offering and he's just going to keep rejecting me but we will see in the future if you do want to check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash the underscore steak underscore bake. And of course, that is the same for my Instagram and Twitter. So if you do want to check me out on those, it would be much appreciated. There's a Discord link down below as well. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. See you later. And remember, be kind to each other. See you later.